Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of this fabulous series that we've been uh, going through, myself and Dr. Jay Smith, and has to do with the early Quranic manuscripts and the many problems that are found in them. We've dealt really with a number of issues. For instance, we've been through some of these specific individual manuscripts and shows uh, showed some of the analyses that are done on them by scholars, by experts. Uh, we've been through also some of the uh, problems with the early traditional compilation datings. Uh, we uh, talked a little bit about also the carbon dating, and uh, we discussed uh, some of these specific manuscripts like the Sana manuscript and the two layers basically are found in it. Uh, right now, we are going to talk about something that probably many Muslims are going to be shocked when we mention the 31 different Arabic Qurans. You've heard me correctly. The 31 different Arabic Qurans and the number is still counting. Uh, the hope, I think, Dr. J, is to find the 37, basically. Yeah, that's, now that's, these are current day. These are modern day Qurans. That's right. They're all that's in right. Arabic. These are not translations. We're not that's talking right. about English translations or right. Urdu translations or French translations. These are Arabic Qurans, all of them different. Correct. And not just a few. We're talking about tens of thousands of differences. So what do we mean by the 31 different Arabic Qurans here? Well, to do to understand what we're talking about, we need us to understand and we need to define razm, the consonant. If you could do that here, looking at the Arabic skeletal script. So basically, if you look here at the script itself, there are letters and you put the letters together and you come up with words. And that's what we call the structure or the rism, basically. In fact, the early manuscript, like we have an example here from the Samarkand manuscript, one of the early Quranic manuscripts, there is something missing here as someone who reads Arabic. I can tell you I can look at it, but it will be a while before I take a number of guesses at what does it mean. Why? Because the diacritical markings are missing and the dottings are missing to identify basically the pronunciation and the vowel markings for the word. Therefore, we are left now with a number of guesses how you can read certain words. In other words, you're not going to really be reading specifically and exactly the same way that it was intended. When Here's it was another written. example. There are no diacritical marks, no vowelization right. in the Sana manuscript. That's even another earlier one. Here's another one. Uh, you can see another example. Uh, this is from the Topkapi. Uh, they have penciled in, re in red. Notice that a beginning of diacritical marks. Those are later penciling. And that's important for people to see what we mean by that. Those dots, that's what I was referring to. This is a, new, that's a system that was invented by Abu Aswad uh, Adwali, and he began to use this because he was troubled by the fact that people were not reading the Quran accurately. Okay. Now here's another one. Uh, this is Ali's Quran. This is a Shiite Quran. Uh, again, no dots. I don't see any dots there. I don't see any vowels. I don't see any damas, no kasras, no fatah. And then we now come to the 28 letters. So these are the 28 Arabic letters. However, if you show this to an Arab speaker, they're going to be surprised because there are things missing here. What is missing is the dottings. And yeah. now you're going to see it. Now, these are the, well, these are the six. Before we get to the dottings, we, these are the six letters that I'm going to put uh, circle in yellow that are unique, that don't need the dottings. So you have the A. Exactly. No matter what, they're never going to read a, you need have the a gaf, dotting, basically. You have the lam. You have the mim. You have the ha. And you have the wow. So those are the six that don't need any diacritical marks. But the other 22 do. That's right. So of the 28, six are unique. 22 absolutely need the dots. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this smiley face here. There's a smiley face, right? That's what right. happens when you put one dot? That's a noon. Okay, two dots. Ta. Okay, three dots. Tha. Okay, one dot below. Ba. Okay, two dots below. Yeah. So... What happens when you just take that? Ta, ta, ta ba, ba, and yeah. yeah. Five different so possibilities. Five different letters from just one little smiley face. That's right. Can you see why dots are absolutely important? This changes everything. Now let's put it and let's look at three smiley faces connected together. So smiley face, smiley face, smiley smart. When we add dots and vowels above, the, below the line, we get 19 different words. There you can see them right. There's an example of 19. So basically, if you remove the dottings, uh, it's almost going to look the same. But once you start adding the dottings, look at the different meanings that emerge out of this. Okay. Now, let's now look at the 31 Qurans that Hatun Tash, my colleague in, in UK, has found. These are not my Qurans. These are hers. She has found these in different marketplaces uh, in 
I think in Yemen, and in Jordan, and in Morocco. Those are the three countries that she and her friends have found. So she's been scouring these for about the last two years. So these are not difficult to find. If she can find 31 of them, then I, there should be any difficult. And hopefully we're going to be able to find 37 that, we should, that are out there in the marketplace. But Dr. Smith, I, I thought there was only one Quran. Uh, that's what we've been told, isn't it? It looks like there's 31. Now people say, ah, this is not a big problem. But let me just look and go through them real quickly. There is the first one. You go ahead and read them as we put them up. That's, for instance, as Susi. Uh, this is Al Jafar, uh, Abu Jafar. This is Yaqub. Uh, this is Duri. Uh, Ibn Amr. Uh, Khalaf. Uh, al, uh, I cannot see it from far away here. It's uh, Khalaf Al Khalid. Al Khalid, yes. Uh, al Layth, uh, Al Khalil, Warsh, uh, for now, instance. Warsh. Now, Warsh are popular in North Africa. So, this is one of those that's popular in North Africa. That's right. And here's Warsh. Another Warsh. Hold on a minute. You can have two different Warshes? Looks yeah. like there's more than just one Warsh. Popular somewhere else. And then uh, Ibn Jamaz. Ibn Jamaz, yeah. Duri. And another Duri. So another duty, the same person, That's right. two different texts. We're going to get to that one when we yes, get to the graph. There's next. another Khalaf. Khalaf again. Al Qisai. Al Qisai, yes. Now this is Shoba ibn Al Yah. Al Yah. Yeah, they're starting to get uh, tiny. These uh, are getting too tiny for us to even read this far away. Yeah. That's Hisham ibn Amr. There you have Al Bazi. Khalaf. Another now, Khalaf. Khalaf. But Khalaf. Yeah. Shoba again, another Shoba. So there's a second different with the same name. And then we get, now these are getting so tiny, I can't even read them. Ibn Kathir, not the commentator. This That's right. a That's right. reader. Okay, and then we finally get to... In fact, Ibn Kathir uh, is considered to be one of the early, uh, basically, readers as well. Okay, so we, I'm, I'm sorry, let me just go forward. Now, I'm going to have to go through all these again. So let's just put them up there one after another. All 26 have come up. And this is 26 that she had as of last summer. Since last summer now, she's found another five. So we're up to 31. But here's what I, is interesting. I want to show you this next graph here because this next graph really then produces what I'm looking for. Let's take Huffs out of there, but take a look at all of those names along the right side. And you can see Hisham and Kalum and Warish and uh, you can see Al-Bazi. And when you come to this one here, there you can see Hufs, where the black circle is around. That's right. Hufs is the one that is used today. All of those they had to choose from. And when you look at each one, let's just put it to the next slide. When you look at each one of those brown cloud forms, look at the numbers that are in them. Those represent how many variants each one of those readers have from Hufs, who's circled in black. So... Al-Bazi, 1,094 variants. Coming on down to Kulun, Kalun, 1,700 variants. Hisham, 1,300 variants. Khalaf, 2,629 variants. And then you have Al-Duri, 336 variants. Look at Abu Ali Al-Harith, 5,000 variants from Hafs. Thousands of variants. We're not just talking about few. We're talking about thousands of variants. And when we go back and look at the bigger graph, um, Hatun has gone through and she's just looked at 23 Qurans. That's all she's had time to do so far of the 31 she has. And she's already found 59,776. I mean, almost 60,000. All you need is just one difference. That's all you need is one difference. And that shoots down that theory immediately. Now let's look at Hafs again, the one in black, and let's look at his date. Look when he died, 805. In fact, when you look at all these dates here, they're all in the 800s. Most of them are in the 800s. They're all in the 9th century. So this has been around for over a 1,000 years. People say, well, it's not very important. These are nothing more than Ahruf and Kiryat's different readings. Uh, there you can see a, uh, of where, the, of where the number are. But what I want to do is I want to look at these readings. So let's take a look at some of them. That's right. And let's look at this. This is the one that most Muslims come up with as an example of it's nothing any different. I'll do the Hafs, you do the Warsh, okay? So right. Hafs is the one that was created in 1924. The Warsh is now very popular in Northern Africa. On the one side, it says, the only owner of the day of recompense, that's Maliki, has been changed to? Malik, which the is king the, of 
the day. And so they say they say this all the time, Mr. Smith, the owner of the day or the king. It's the same thing. Let me add something here. I would tell you, I did a study on this, and there is uh, another uh, another reading by Abu Hanifa, and it says Malaka, meaning possessed the day of judgment. Okay, so he possessed. So there is a theological difference. Here we have now Surah 2, Ayah 10. You have Yaksi Buna in Hafs, which says, In their hearts is a disease, and Allah increases their disease. A painful doom is theirs because they lie. That's it's right. changed to? You get the boon, meaning they accused others of lying. So significance, are they doomed because they lie or because they accuse others of lying? That's right. Significant. That's right. Surah 2, Ayah 58. Nagfiru is, uh, uh, and when he said, enter this town and eat bountifully and say, forgive us, and we shall forgive you your sins. Nice. That's right. And the next one, it's yogfaru in a passive, basically, and it shall be forgiven. So who forgives sins? Is it we, God, or are they arbitrarily forgiven? That's right. Huge difference. Hafs uh, in Surah 2, Ayah 125 is, and take you has been changed to? Uh, uh, they took um, or have taken. So, Hafs takes is addressing a plural form. Do they take this place now or has it already been taken? That's right. In Surah 2, Ayah 140, in the Hafs, it says, Or do you say that Ibrahim, Yaqub, and his offspring were Jews? In the Warsh says, and or do they say? Now, who knows better than Allah, you or the others? In the Hafs, you is plural. That's right. So you can see there's a problem there. And here, Surah 2, Ayah 184, Miss Keenan uh, is one poor person. For those who can fast with difficulty, they have been to feed a one poor person. It's changed to? Masakin. And that's really important. Uh, many, by, by the way, uh, poor uh, persons. Why this is important? Because remember, Islam is a religion of works. And this is about fasting. Feeding one is different than feeding many. There you go. And this plural meaning at least three. So I'd like to know which one I'm required if I don't fast. Here you have, uh, it, it, in them is a great sin, has been changed to? Uh, basically plenty or many. And here is a great example of what we were talking about, the dotting. Because in one, the dot was below. Here, three above. That's what makes the difference here. So is drinking wine and gambling a great sin or plenty of sin? <laughs> so you can see that would have a huge consideration. Um, uh, 30, Surah 33, Ayah 68 has been uh, cursed them with a great curse or, in the case of what is Much curses or many, many curses. curses. Let's right. go on. Here you have Dafu, Dafu, uh, which is repelling. Allah's repelling some has been changed to? Allah defending. Well, so did Allah repel some men or did Allah defend against men? What action did Allah use? That's repel, right. which is offensive, or defend, which is defensive. That's right. Now we get to Surah 2, I'm sorry, uh, 2, Ayah 270. And there you have, uh, I'm just gone beyond myself. Let's go back one. It doesn't seem to want to work right now. You have Wakafalaha, for her Lord made her grow in a good manner and put her under care of Zakaria. This is talking about Mary. That's right. It has been changed in the Warsh to? To he, Zakaria, uh, basically, or Zakaria, I should say, uh, took charge of her. So did Allah put Zakaria in charge of Mary, or did Zakaria take charge himself? So one is active, one is passive. There you go. And you can see it's by two different characters. Surah 3, Ayah 79. Be you Rabbaniyun, because you are teaching the book, has been changed. You know the book. Do you believe, do believers teach the book, or do they simply know the book? Every, right. Now, many people know a book, but no, are not capable of teaching it. That's right. So 3, I 83, do they seek and him shall they be returned? The Has other been one. Changed? Oh, this has gone. This, I'm having a problem with my, my PowerPoint here at this time. That's no problem. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. This one doesn't want to see it. Want. Oh, this is interesting. Katala versus Kutila. And right. how many a prophet fought with whom were many worshippers of the Lord? Has changed to? How many prophets were killed? Did the prophets simply fight or were they killed? Now, if I were a prophet, I would rather fight than be killed as the former survives. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cyril 6, Iowa 115. 
Is the word of God fulfilled or the words of God fulfilled? The singular Huff's word doesn't agree with the plural form of the second sentence. So there you have a grammatical mistake. Absolutely. And, and now are we talking about what, what do we mean by words? That Like the whole book, basically, or a specific passage or a specific word if it is in a singular? Now, I've got 70 of these. and We could continue on and on and on. I think we can stop right there. Absolutely. You can go up on, if you can go up on Fander Films, I've got all 70 up there on Fander Films. And we're, we're finding an awful lot of kickback, an awful lot of kickback from Muslims. Why do you think there's so much kickback from this? Well, because, of course, this is something strange and unusual for them to see and hear because we're used to the idea as Muslims when I was growing up that there is only one Quran, unchanged, perfect, and now you're telling me it has a lot of changes and a lot of differences. Huge significance. Now, you notice what we've done. We have gone through quite a few, and I'm just going to repeat what we have done. We started with the two compilations, and we noticed that there were two compilations, one by Abu Bakr and the other one by Uthman, one in 632 to 634 and the other one in 652. 20 years difference between the two compilations. We know that the first one uh, uh, was only given to one person, Hafsa, and then... We noticed that the second one was given to, was made on one copy, and then nine copies were made from it. Right. And everything else that had come from the first one was then burnt, sent to nine different provinces. And then we wanted to find out, well, where are these nine? We've, come, we've been able to find six today that have been claimed. We looked at all six of them, the Topkapi, the Samarkand, the Ma'il, the Petropolis, uh, the Husseini, and the Sana. We looked at all six of them, and we found that not one of them is from the 7th century, except right. the lower layer of the Sana palimpsest. says. They are all 8th or 9th century. Not one of them is complete, and not one of them agrees with each other, and they don't agree with the Quran we have today. So then we looked zeroed in on the Sana manuscript specifically. We want to look at that lower layer. And we compared the two layers. We looked at Asma Hilali's book where she right. notices that there are 63 verses with 70 differences. When they put it under ultraviolet light, they can see those differences. They don't, and these differences don't follow any pattern, any manuscript patterns that are well known within the traditions, the later traditions. Elizabeth Quinn, therefore, says it looks like we've got a nascent Quran that was begun here was, and then had to be wiped off because it had so many errors, had to be written over top again in 705, right. and the one on 705 still doesn't agree with the Quran we have today. That's so right. that's a real problem. And then we went and we asked about the carbon datings. And we wanted to see what the carbon datings show. And we noticed that there was quite a few carbon datings, four different laboratories that we looked at. And they were, four of them just looked at the sauna manuscript, looked at one parchment from the sauna manuscript. And they found that for all four of the laboratories that they were all before 550. Muhammad wasn't even born to 570. So these predated the life of Muhammad, they predated the life of the Quran, and they predated Islam as well. A lot of damage and information so far. So far. And then we finally ended with the last, and that is the, the 31 different Qurans that are in existence today that supposedly are nothing more than Ahruf and Kirat, which were all destroyed and de eradicated in the 7th century, according to the traditions, by Uthman himself. And we just showed that it's not as simple as just Ahruf or different Qurat. In every case, we just looked at about 10 of the 70 that we have of the 59,000 that exist. That's right. We just looked at a, a just smidgen of them, and we noticed that in every case they change the meaning and they change the theology. That's correct. What are your conclusions on that then, uh, now that you've seen all this today? The Quran is a man-made book that has a lot of changes, that it went through a process of early editing and redactions that continued for a while. We're not talking a couple of years. We're talking hundreds of years. And that more and more discoveries are supporting this particular theory now. Now, Muslims claim the Quran, this book is the word of God. This is what they claim is the word of God. Why? Because it's eternal, number one. Because it was sent down, number two. Because it was complete, number three, at the time of Uthman, and it's because it's unchanged. We have pretty much destroyed that in these episodes, have we not? Yeah. It's uh, not eternal. If, if a Muslim doesn't see this, then we need to pray for them that they will begin to see this. Now, let me ask you a question. We don't make these claims about our Bible, the Word of God, right? We say it is the Word of God, but is it Amen. the only Word of God we have? Do we have another Word of God who took on flesh? We have our Lord among us? Jesus Christ. The Logos. That's right. That means... We have the Holy Spirit in us. There you go. And who is that Word of God? Now, let me ask you, is he eternal? Absolutely. Was he sent down? Absolutely. Is he complete? 
Absolutely. Has he never changed? Absolutely. Ooh, and he was perfect. So the very four things. The Quran admitted this. The very four things that the Muslims are claiming about this book we have destroyed in these episodes. And yet the very four things they're looking for you can find in Jesus Christ. Amen. Even sadly, the Quran says these things about Jesus. He does, doesn't it? He is the Word of God Amen. in chapter 4, verse 171. That he was sent into Mary. There you go. Send to Mary, 19, Surah 19, yeah. Ayah 19 and 20. So you can see the very thing that they need, we've already got. Muslims, I hope you're listening. Yeah. Everything you want, we have got. In, yes, the Word of God, which Amen. is, this Amen. is Amen. A, Amen. the Amen. Word of God. But it's not the only word of God, the greater word of God, the, uh, of what, th what this book is about. And this book points to the word of God. And who is he? His name is Jesus Christ. If you want the word of God, come on home. Come Amen. on home. Listen, Amen. this book is not what you need. This is not the book you're looking for. Amen. It's the smaller book. I keep this one bigger for a reason. The bigger, the better book. That's this book. We haven't even maybe had a chance to look at this book today because this book doesn't make the claims. Uh, that you claim about this book. We've pretty much destroyed every one of those claims in these episodes we have done. And we hope that you know which is the book that you can find out about God, you can find out about Jesus, you can find out about salvation. All you need, everything you need is in this book. God bless you. It's been so good having you here. Over to you, al -Fadi, because I just love with the fact that what they need, we already have if they'd only come home. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, my brother. And uh, obviously, um, we are going to continue now with a whole different theme and a whole different topic uh, in the upcoming, basically, uh, videos. But this particular one, uh, without a doubt, has been extremely important and eye-opening and also a very damaging uh, when it comes to the authenticity, reliability, perfection, preservation of the Quran. So my hope uh, to you uh, as a Muslim who's been watching this, as you heard my dear brother here, Jay Smith, appeal to you, come home to the, uh, to, uh, the Father through the word that he sent to become flesh and die on a cross for your sin so that by faith, by grace, you will be saved and you will have an assurance of eternal life. Without it, you will not be able to find the way for Jesus himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Till we meet again. Have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.